What's up? Hey, today we're doing a Q and A TMI edition, answering your juiciest pregnancy questions. As someone who was previously afraid of pregnancy and has now been just completely amazed by my body, I feel like I can say pregnancy doesn't have to be scary, but I also realize that there are some things that you might not feel comfortable talking to your OB about. Things that aren't necessarily medical, might feel more personal, but maybe you don't have a friend who's been pregnant or you just don't feel comfortable broaching the topic of it, that is what I'm here for. So on the note of TMI, before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. And at this point, I feel like my entire journey of sharing way too much info about my body. We will talk about how I incorporate Seed into my routine more later in today's video. For now though, if you want to check out Seed for yourself, I'll put a link in the description box down below. As as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. What about labor are you scared for? If anything, you seem confident as a first timer. Nothing that I thought I would be. I thought I would be worried about tearing, about pushing, about stretching, about pain, about pooping, about looking ugly when I'm delivering a literal baby. Things that I feel like are often portrayed in the media or like just used to describe delivering a baby as this icky but necessary experience that happens in between when you've got the cute belly and when you get to meet the baby. I does not to say these things won't happen, but I've done my research. I understand what can happen during delivery, the likelihood of different things happening. And yes, while there are some very scary things that can happen when you have a baby, if things go a little sideways, learning about all the possibilities was calming for me because I'm not worried about the unknown. And I also realized that a lot of my worries were rooted in my own kind of twisted and skewed beliefs about pregnancy. So if I had to pick one thing, I'd say I'm afraid of missing it, which I know sounds crazy if you are someone who's maybe afraid of delivering a baby, but one of my big goals with this pregnancy, especially with how late I found out, has been to experience every moment fully. I had a dream last night where it was one of those dreams where I woke up in the dream, like I just kind of jumped into the action of the dream and I had just delivered baby, but my memory was kind of foggy. I didn't remember pushing, I didn't remember the, the stages of laboring, and I was very hung up on the fact that I didn't remember delivering the placenta and nobody else seemed to be worried about this. And I'm like, hello, this is kind of important to me make sure that I don't hemorrhage and keep bleeding. But that's my only worry. And it's not a huge worry. It's not like weighing on me daily. I know there's no shortage of negative birth stories online and I get it, it can be tempting to read them. They're entertaining in like a gossipy kind of way. And I understand that it's probably validating for women who've had traumatic birth experiences to connect with other women who've had traumatic birth experiences and feel validated in that or just feel a little bit of sympathy. But being perfectly honest, speaking at least for me, it is not helpful to share these with first time moms or with women who are feeling anxiety going into delivery because many of these situations are as a result of something that you couldn't predict, that you couldn't control, or that are very, very specific to you, that are not going to apply to everybody. And so as somebody who is going into labor and delivery, is trying to prepare mentally for this major event, you can't control, you can't predict if a situation like that is going to happen. What you can control is the content you're consuming, and as a result of that, to a degree, the way that you're feeling. I am not choosing to carry that anxiety with me. Gotten any hemorrhoids during your pregnancy? No, but I did get an anal fissure, which was an experience. Hemorrhoids are swollen blood vessels in your bum, whereas anal fissures are small tears or cracks in the lining going, going to the opening. Both are more likely to come up during pregnancy due to increased blood volume, pressure through your pelvic area, as well as constipation that can often come with pregnancy resulting in harder or firmer stools. So what happened was after the whole finding out I'm pregnant situation, which if you still haven't watched that video, I highly recommend. I think it's a little funny in hindsight, but after finding out I'm pregnant, there were a few crazy weeks where we had some health concerns with baby, ultimately found out baby was healthy. I was settling into pregnancy. My digestion was doing pretty well, but 
there were a few days that I was off my routine just with going to medical appointments and the stress of everything that had been happening. And I hadn't gone number two in a few days. So you can imagine when I felt the urge to go, I was excited. I sat on the toilet. I was waiting, nothing was happening. So as you do, you know, you do the little wiggle, you readjust a little bit, and I felt sharp pain. At this point though, I was committed. So whatever, whatever, got it out. When I went to wipe, I looked down and I saw red, bright red blood in the toilet, which at this point, after the previous few weeks, I was like, you've gotta be kidding me. Ashton, come out, am I being punked? Blood in the toilet during pregnancy is scary. So I got on my hands and knees, no shame. I was like microscopically looking at what was in the toilet, trying to establish which end this blood had been coming from. And thankfully, I, through my thorough inspection, I was able to determine that the blood was in the number two. Still not great, but you know, research, research, read a little bit online and yes, everything was consistent with an anal fissure. It is the only time that this happened during my pregnancy, thankfully, but that was fun for me. As I said, this happened after a few days where I was not on my routine. We were going between medical appointments. Jeff and I did like a little baby moon because we wanted to celebrate the, the baby. But after this incident, I made a point of really staying on my routine, at least as it applied to avoiding constipation. As constipation is probably the biggest culprit of developing these symptoms during pregnancy. For me, this means eating regularly. This means getting enough water, getting in my movement daily and taking my seed. If you are not familiar with seed, seed is a two-in-one daily symbiotic. That means it contains prebiotics as well as probiotics. Prebiotics are like the food for the bacteria in your body and probiotics are like more of the good bacteria in your body that help them. It's like an extra set of helping hands for them. It's more bacteria to get those jobs done that your body needs to get done from the inside out. Now what's unique about seed is that it's not just designed for digestive and bloating benefits. Of course, these are great. Of course, these are what I often talk about, but seed contains a science-backed blend that's designed for total body benefits. So think cardiovascular health, immune function, skin health, and the list goes on. The reason I started taking seed it was to help with ease of bloating, helping to promote regularity, helping to reduce inflammation throughout my gut. It worked when I was struggling more with the diarrhea, things being a little too loose side, and it's helped now when I've been struggling more with the regularity side of things. I am so proud to say, this is a TMI talk, so you can't complain. I'm so proud to say I have gone number two every single day, at least for the past few weeks, which I feel like is a very big feat for me, being in my third trimester of pregnancy, having a lot of baby in this belly that you think would be blocking things, that you think would be slowing things down, but I am on my routine. What's also great about seed is that regardless of your routine, no matter how crazy it is, no matter what your work schedule is like, or if you're running between medical appointments, whatever you got going on, it's pregnancy friendly, it's breastfeeding friendly, you don't need to be pregnant to take it either, anybody can take seed. It's just two capsules first thing every morning. Put it on your bedside table. Pack it when you're traveling. Put it in your purse. Put it in your work bag. Put it wherever you're going to remember it and take it daily and watch to see the benefits in your own body. I've been taking seed for well over a year now. I was unknowingly taking it, or I guess I knew I was taking it, but before I knew about my pregnancy. And I'm so grateful that I've continued taking it because it is the easiest part of my routine to keep me feeling good in my body. Also, if you wanna check out Seed for yourself, add it to your routine. I will put a link in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. What's your birth plan? I don't have a birth plan, I have birth preferences. And this is something that I learned from my doulas when I went to our prenatal class that I'm actually really glad that they emphasized. So the way they explained it is when many people write a birth plan, it's kind of like writing an itinerary for a trip. It's often very rigid, it's often time bound, it often makes many assumptions that certain things will be within your control. But the truth is, 
Many parts of labor and delivery do not operate on a schedule, are not entirely predictable. While there are certain signs that things are progressing, things can also speed up or slow down or change at any point in the process. So having a rigid plan is really only putting more pressure on yourself in a time where you want to be reducing stress so that your body can continue progressing on its own. That said, my birth preferences revolve around minimal intervention. Different people have different definitions definitions for what is a natural versus a unnatural or medicated birth. But my goal is to avoid the cascade of intervention. Look up that term, Google it. There are many people who will explain this better than I do. But basically, I want to avoid being put in a situation where because I said yes to one medical decision, medical staff then start making assumptions about other decisions during the birthing process. This is not a knock on nurses or doctors, but I think it's important to go into this with your eyes wide open. While this is going to be a very special experience for you, it might be new, they are delivering babies daily. Their priority is efficiency. Many hospitals and care teams have a way that they like to do things, which may or may not be aligned with your preferences or how your body is progressing. What's your birth plan, epidural or natural? Both options are amazing, just curious. So I feel like you should be starting to get the vibe when I say minimal intervention, that means that I generally lean more natural, give me less of the things. I am not planning on getting an epidural. The reason for this, at least for me, is that I want to feel everything. But what I really appreciate about this question is the emphasis that both are amazing, both are valid ways of delivering your baby because I see so much arguing, so much shaming, so much judgment about this decision online, which I think is just kind of silly because we're all on the same team. We're all trying to deliver a healthy baby. So as far as I'm concerned, if you got the baby, if you feel pretty happy about the baby, I don't care what you did in between. You're not proving anything to me. You don't need to prove anything during delivery. Change the scenery says getting uncomfy, but next question, TMI, but are you willing to talk about pregnant sex? Yes, this is a TMI talk Q&A, and I feel like there's a few angles here, but the first one I think makes sense to tackle is attraction or body image during pregnancy. So something disconcerting that I've been served in my TikTok feed lately are videos either from men or from women or for like people stitching other videos, but basically commenting on how there are men that don't find pregnant bodies attractive or specifically don't find the pregnant versions of their partners attractive, which to me, that is just little boy energy. That is a small man who cannot take responsibility. And if you are attracted to women, if you appreciate femininity, you want to see a woman in her element, pregnancy. This is not me man hating. There are many men that I think are fantastic. I've been lucky enough to have many male figures and friends and relationships in my life. People that I think are fantastic. People that I either look up to or I just really admire and I think are great. But when the bar is so low, a byproduct of that is that there's also no roadmap for men who want to raise the bar, who actually want to support their partners during pregnancy, which for some results in them doing nothing and for others creates an insecurity because they don't know what they should be doing and they're already worried about the fact that pregnancy is an inherently imbalanced journey. I mean, you can't just trade off who's just dating the baby and so then it creates tension in the relationship and they don't even know how to address it. Back to sex. Let's just say you have a partner who is amazing, supportive and accepting and appreciative of your body at every stage. You may still be struggling with intimacy or with feeling sexy during pregnancy. Not only are there so many misconceptions that women have about their own bodies during pregnancy, I feel like every week I'm learning something new about my body, but we're the ones growing the baby. And if we're already unsure of our bodies and how they're changing and how they're feeling, like just imagine what your partner is thinking. They might not feel as confident about what's gonna make you feel good because things do feel different. They might be worrying, does she think I'm looking at her differently? Does she even want to have sex with me? Like, am I encroaching on this mystical and magical stage of pregnancy? One thing I'm grateful for with finding out about this pregnancy as late as we did, as much as it was stressful and it put a lot of pressure on us to get a lot of things done quickly, it also forced us to have those uncomfy conversations early. Because even if they're about 
icky topics or things you might find a little bit embarrassing, they do actually lead to better intimacy, which is so important as you're starting the huge journey of parenting. One mindset shift that might help because I think a big perception about once you're pregnant and once you have kids is like, oh, sex is gonna be boring. We're just gonna always be rushed or doing the same things or it's gonna be lazy. Like during pregnancy, your body is changing weekly. When I say that things are going to feel different and you're gonna have to figure out what makes you feel good, I don't say that in a negative way. If you can both go in with an open mind and be like, okay, we're going on an adventure for the next six months and we are gonna have to adapt weekly. We're gonna have to try new things, like God forbid. Like we're gonna get a little adventurous. There's gonna be some novelty, there's gonna be some fun. Yes, there are gonna be some things that probably don't work or probably don't feel good, but you may also discover new things that you really enjoy. So I think it's actually an opportunity to improve communication and skills and all of those things. That is it for today. I feel like we covered a lot, but at the same time, I feel like there's so many more questions I want to address because your questions were great. Definitely let me know if you want to do a part two to this, a follow-up. If you want me to put another question box up on my IG stories, I love doing these. I do have some follow-up videos planned for going a little bit more in depth on my birth plan or preferences, whatever you want to call it, as well as what I'm doing to prepare for labor and delivery. I am going to get to filming these this week, assuming I don't literally have the baby, which I guess at this stage of pregnancy is, is a possibility any week. I mentioned it earlier in the video, but if you do want to check out the Seed Daily Symbiotic for yourself, this has been part of my routine well before pregnancy, but at this stage, it's also pregnancy and breastfeeding safe, which I appreciate. I will put a link for that in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first month supply. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one.